Hello, my name is Dr. Diwan S. Raja. Today I will discuss about calcium channel blockers. We have two types of calcium channel blocker. One is dihydropyridine. Dihydropyridine. Another group is the non dihydropyridine. We got two types dihydropyridine and non hydro, non dihydropyridine. Among the dihydropyridine, we have the nice diapin. Okay, we have the isra diapin. We have the amlodipine, amlodipine, amlodipine. Okay. We have also fendodipine, fendodipine, fendodipine. Okay. So, nifidipine, istradipine. Fendodipin. Also, we have the nicardipin and nicardipin. Nicardipin. So, these are dihydropyridine type of calcium channel blockers. We have non dihydropyridine calcium channel blocker. These are two. One is the Vera Pemil. Another one is the one one is the Vera Pemil. Another is the Dil Tiagin. Okay, Dil Tiag. Okay, one one is the Dil Dil Tiagin. Another one is the Vera Pemil. Okay. They have some structural differences. We have also two subgroups among them. This is the benzothiazepine. This is benzothiazepine. Okay. And verapamil is diphenyl, diphenyl alkalamine, diphenyl alkalamine. Lamine. Okay, so we have two drugs, Verapamil and Diltiagem. These are the non dihydropyridine. So these are the common drug. This is the first generation dihydropyridine, and these are the second generation dihydropyridine. Okay, this is less specific. Verapamil. This is little more specific. It has less side effect than that of the verapamil, the the dil dil tiagem. Okay, so dil tiagem and the verapamil. We got the medication dil tiagem and verapamil. This is nifedipine. These are ending with ipin, ipin, all are ipin. Okay, the dihydropyridine. <coughs> now, what are the mode of action of the calcium channel blocker? We need calcium for muscle contraction. No calcium, no muscle contraction. Calcium is important source. Calcium has particular channel and also receptors. So, so calcium enters muscle cell through special voltage sensitive calcium calcium channel so calcium enters the muscle through the through the special through the special 
voltage sensitive calcium channel voltage sensitive calcium channels okay is very important and our calcium channel blocks the l type calcium channel our calcium channel blockers the calcium channel blockers blocks what they blocks blocks the L type calcium channel L type calcium calcium channel okay so if you remember that this block L type calcium channel and our calcium channel blockers are also anti-arrhythmic drug they are type 4 anti-arrhythmic drug okay in their classification class 4 these all are class 4 class 4 anti-arrhythmic drug arrhythmic drug okay so to remember that part so what it does the this this actually slow phase 4 spontaneous depolarization they slows phase 4 spontaneous spontaneous depolarization okay they slow conduction in tissue dependent on calcium current slows conduction of the calcium dependent tissue calcium so they what they do they slow conduction in the tissue dependent on calcium car calcium current okay so there is no conduction of the tissue dependent on on calcium current is very important okay so such as what are they that is the conducting system of the heart like that of the av node example is the av node av node is the atrioventricular node a part of the conducting system of the heart av node okay and what is done they mostly act on the vascular smooth muscle and heart site of action site of action is the vascular smooth muscle what is that vascular smooth muscle vascular smooth muscle is the tunica media in the wall of the blood vessel and also on the cardiac muscle they also work on the cardiac muscle okay so smooth muscle of the vascular smooth muscle of the artery arteriole or venule okay capillary okay capillary has no smooth muscle but the arteriole has and also venule has small smooth muscle okay so they work on the vascular smooth muscle and heart especially the conducting system of the heart like that of the AV node as a node okay so this is the mode of action these are class 4 drugs slow phase 4 spontaneous depolarization okay and slow conduction and tissue dependent on calcium currents such as the AV node mostly act on the muscular smooth muscle 
like what like that you need the media of the small blood vessel and also in the heart where on the cardiac myocyte also in the conducting system of the heart like that of the AV node okay so you got that they block what they block the L type calcium channels okay so we got that the calcium channel blocker the idea is that in this way the cytosol of the ma of the muscle cell will will have we have less calcium less calcium means less contraction less contraction that means less force of contraction okay so it will cause the vasodilatation okay so we need calcium calcium cannot enter then what will happen there will be there will be less contraction of the smooth muscle so less contraction of smooth muscle contraction of smooth muscle what will happen there will be vasodilation dilation and there will be decrease cardiac output okay decrease cardiac output decrease anotropic action on the heart so there will be bradycardia decrease okay anotropic anotropic action on the heart action on the heart okay we got the got the mode of action of the calcium channel blocker again we have two type of calcium channel blocker one is dihydropyridine another group is non-hydro non-dihydropyridine okay dihydropyridine are we discussed that nifedipine isodipine okay we have the uh, we have other medication like that of fendopine fendopine and amlodipine okay what are the non-dihydropyridine these are the verapamine and also the the dil 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 and verapamine okay we got the mode of action it blocks the calcium channel no calcium channel channel entry into the cytosol of the cell that will lead to uh, le less contraction so there will be vasodilatation okay we got that now what are the therapeutic indication of calcium channel blocker therapeutic indication indication okay this is very important let me remember that therapeutic indication especially for hypertension this is an anti-hypertensive drug so hypertension what are the drug for hypertension these are the drug like that of verapamine dithiazine Okay, Vera Pemin Diltiagen Diltiagen. Okay, Vera Pemin Diltiagen. Okay, these are the drug, and also we get the other drug of the dihydro. This is non dihydropyridine with the dihydropyridine like that of nifedipine knife diapin amlodipin amlodipin okay fendodipin fendodipin okay we got this drug so we will also get the uh, other drug like that of nitrile diapin Nicardipine, Okay, they all actually decreases the decreases the the blood pressure. So this all of them are antihypertensive drug. Okay, now I'll go to the angina. Angina. 
Why angina? Angina happens due to ischemic condition in the heart. The blood vessels are constricted. So the myocardium don't get blood supply. So there will be pain. That is the, the pathogenesis of angina. If it is prolonged, we call it myocardial infarction. What are the drug for angina? We have had the, again, the varapen, delta agent, naifidate. These are the drugs we like to give also in angina. Okay. Then supraventricular tracheoarrhythmia. Supraventricular tracheoarrhythmia. Okay. Or supraventricular tracheoarrhythmia. What is the drug? What supraventricular tracheoarrhythmia? We will use to give varapamil and the diltiazem. So, varapamil, diltiazem. We we'll use that. Okay. So we got the supraventricular ventricular tracheoarrhythmia. So we we'll give the varapamil diltiazem. In case of heart failure, some patient has mild to moderate heart heart failure. Mild to moderate. Usually, it is it is severe heart failure, which is actually contraindicated. In that condition. So, in case of heart failure, we give this drug. These are the, the dihydropyridine. We'll avoid diltigium and the varapamil. So, nifedipine, amlodipine, fendodipine, nicardipine. Okay, this one, two, three, four. This all the drug for the heart failure. No diltigium or varapamil in that condition. Okay. For along with beta blocker, sometimes person need more than one antihypertensive drug. Beta blocker is a relative contraindication, especially for varapamil. Okay. For varapamil, no, no interest. We should not give the beta blocker. Okay. But in case of diltigium, it may be plus minus. It, it can be given with caution, no doubt, with the nifedipine, amlodipine, fen fenodipine, and nicardipine. So we got the use of the therapeutic use of calcium channel blocker, hypertension, angina pectoris. It may be also used in case of fringe metal angina or just vasospastic angina okay it even that angina happen in rest sometimes okay it may be used all type of angina supraventricular tachycardia tachyarrhythmia in case of heart failure we avoid the non dihydropyridine the diltigium varapamil we can use with caution the the dihydropyridine nifedipine amlodipine fenodipine or nicardipine Okay, in case of heart failure, varapamil is usually contraindicated, even diltigium, but we can use the second generation dihydropyridine like amlodipine, fenodipine, nicardipine. Along with beta blocker, varapamil should not be taken. Diltigium may be taken with some type of caution, but the second generation of the dihydropyridine is good even the life dipping may be acceptable okay these are the therapeutic indication some physician also like to use this calcium channel blocker to delay to delay premature labor okay premature labor so that is an indication also it is used in to manage Manage, manage what the migraine headache. Okay, so we got multiple other other use of the use of the calcium channel blocker. So we got the use hypertension angina pectoris, range mental angina or regular angina, supraventricular tachycardia, and regarding heart failure. 
severe heart failure contraindicated mild heart failure only this drug okay we got that idea other use like the to delay premature labor migraine headache we got the therapeutic indications now we go through the the adverse effects of this drug adverse these are the antiarrhythmic drug also must remember that okay adverse effect it is a negative anotropic drug so we will have there is chance of bradycardia hypotension bradycardia hypotension okay there may be heart block even there may be heart failure there may be reflexive epicardia by the baroreceptors reflexive epicardia that is also possible okay and constipation very important around 15 percent population constipation the need to take high fiber diet we may have orthostatic hypotension orthostatic person may not jump up from the sitting position very quickly orthostatic hypotension or hypotension both is possible so we have that and we may have gingival hyperplasia gingival especially the dihydropyridine gingival hyperplasia hyperplasia that is an important adverse effect of this drug okay we got the adverse effect of this drug now we have to know the contraindications okay contraindication okay contraindication is heart failure mild heart fever may be accepted but if it is a very much established heart failure then it is a contraindicator heart block that is another contraindication okay so you have to note that so these are the contraindication heart block and severe bradycardia okay bradycardia if it is too much okay then these are contraindicated now then to know something the drug interaction better go first food interaction food interaction okay grapefruit juice is a no grapefruit juice okay Grape, grape, grapefruit juice is should not be it should not be taken along with the calcium channel blockers so function may be altered due to the presence of grapefruit okay it may, there may be some toxicity also possible so that is important now we'll go to the to the drug interactions drug interactions many drugs may cause problem with this calcium channel blocker like that of the beta blockers okay so for the non dihydropyridine like that of verapamil should not be managed with that of the propanolol or other beta blockers okay so beta blocker is important diuretic because calcium channel blocker themselves are diuretic so they have diuretic function so another diuretic may decrease the blood volume too low that is an another contraindication macrolide antibiotic macrolide antibiotic is contraindicated along with the with the dihydropyridine like that of the nifedipine okay antibiotic that may lead to rhabdomyolysis very important to remember that 
and the drug is warfarin is contraindicated okay it may cause metabolic abnormality and also nitrate that it decrease the blood flow too much okay we got multiple drug and another one is the digoxin digoxin okay so that is also causes the decrease in ostropic action so these are the drug interaction so the physician should take care of this part everything may cause problem depending on the type of medicate of, of the drug okay we got that drug interactions and that's all about the calcium channel blocker if you like my video please support my channel please share the information with your friends and please subscribe me have a nice day bye now